Hey everyone, Jeff here from Films at Home. Thanks for coming back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at The Empire Strikes Back, Star Wars Episode Five on 4K Blu-ray. Hey everyone, so thanks for coming back to the channel. In this video today, we're going to take a look at Episode 5, Empire Strikes Back, of the Star Wars Original Trilogy on 4K. And we're going to do a quick comparison of that to the previous 2011 Blu-ray, which I had in my collection. I'm doing a head-to-head -head comparison here of the video. I'm going to take a look at the audio and then talk a little bit about the packaging and special features as well to ultimately let you guys know whether this is worth upgrading. If you do like this sort of content, 4K, Blu-ray, movie collecting, physical media I'm really a collector at heart so if you like this sort of stuff and you're also a collector or have an interest in blu-ray and 4k please consider subscribing to the channel leave the video a like if you enjoyed it and let me know in the comments what you guys thought about this release if you've already picked it up because I'm always interested to hear other people's opinions now with that being said let's jump right into this review so Star Wars episode 5 the Empire Strikes Back again this was shot on film and so you are hopefully going to see an upgrade in resolution here on the 4K video. And I think that I did in most areas. I will definitely say that details on things like uh, Stormtroopers outfits, Darth Vader's mask and helmet, um, the CGI blends a little bit better with uh, the more detail they have around it. It actually for some reason works. It helps it better. Um, and I thought the detail on things like the Star Destroyers, which you get a lot of in this release, um, as well as you know some of the different spaceships. And there were some really nice scenes on Dagobah, which were also highly detailed. So overall, the 4K resolution and the upgrade from that 1080p to 4K really does make a difference. You get a sharper image, you get better detail, and I'm not surprised by that. Most 4K discs do that well. I very rarely, there are a few instances where I liked the detail in the Blu-ray better in the 4K, but on these older movies, it really does help with 4K resolution, upgrading that film onto a 4K scan. Now again, on this release, as with A New Hope, I talked about that in my last video, but it does look like some digital noise reduction was done, some DNR. It definitely looks a little bit cleaner, a little more digital than it probably should, but Overall, Empire Strikes Back, even on the previous Blu-ray, does look a lot cleaner and a lot better than A New Hope because after the success of A New Hope, they had much more money and much more technical prowess to put into this movie. It had a much larger budget. And so you can definitely see the difference between the way the two were shot. Not to say A New Hope is bad. It's a great movie and it's shot very well. But you can see that they took a little bit more care. There's less out of focus shots. There's less fuzziness on Empire Strikes Back than there is on A New Hope. And so the detailed resolution of the 4K is definitely nice to have. Now the other big thing that we always look at with 4K discs is how does the HDR look? And that's always a huge question because color grading is so important. In fact, many times it's more important than just the resolution uh, and the detail. I'm more interested in how did they change the color and how did they grade the color for HDR? Now, as with A New Hope, there is no Dolby Vision on this release, so you're only getting HDR10. Now, if you want Dolby Vision, you can go over to the 4K stream on Disney+. Plus but those 4K streams are really a weak effort at HDR based on some videos I've seen online. Uh, Vincent over at HDTV Test, his YouTube channel is incredible, highly detailed, and he did a great video on why the Disney Plus Star Wars 4K um, Dolby Vision HDR is really not that great. Now this is though where I had some complaints with Empire Strikes Back. A New Hope, I talked about, it was sort of dark and the HDR really helped brighten things up. It helped with black levels, it helped with the white levels. Everything black and white was, was bright, was dark when it needed to be. Everything looked really good there. Now on Empire Strikes Back, I had an issue with the white color. So on obviously a, a large portion of this movie, the first 45 minutes-ish, take place on the Hoth, the ice planet, completely white, right? 
it's completely white. And on the Blu-ray, it's a nice bright white color. It looks like snow, it looks like ice. And on this one, it's a little more muted. And so they were messing with the HDR. You can tell they did something there. So that part disappointed me a little bit. And then the other part that disappointed me was how dark some of the scenes got. The black levels just were almost, it, there were some black level issues because it got too dark. I could not make out any detail on Darth Vader's mask in some scenes because it was too dark. Whereas on the Blu-ray, even though I had less detail because of the resolution, I could see more because the color grading was done better. And so sort of the blacks and the whites, I had an issue with, and that's a huge part of the movie, especially when you consider how much of this takes place on Hoth. That's a very bright white sequence. And when I watched the Blu-ray, I really liked it and didn't love it so much in the 4K. Now, although the black and whites were a little bit off, the rest of the HDR image is really nice. Skin tones are definitely a huge improvement here. They are much more natural looking. And anything with the red, greens, and blues, anything really outside of black and white, if you're just dealing with colors, things look really nice. The lightsabers look great, lasers look great, the uh, Star Destroyers especially, the gray on those Star Destroyers was perfect. On the Blu-ray, they had sort of a blue tinge to them, um, which is funny because that's sort of what I saw on Hoth with this movie, but when they go to scenes with the Star Destroyers, they are a, an excellent, perfect gray. I mean, they look incredible. And overall, the stuff on Dagobah was pretty good. Those are pretty muted scenes. Cloud City was nice. That was much better because Cloud City's not really bright white. It is more of an off-white yellowish color, and they did that perfectly, and that whole sequence looked good. So the HDR here definitely had its high points and some areas where it was really great and some really poor areas where the Blu-ray was better. And so overall on the visuals for this, compared to A New Hope, um, the visuals are worse. Now, is it worth an upgrade over the Blu-ray? That's the big question with the visuals. And I would say, for the most part, yes. You're gonna sacrifice a little bit with the blacks and the whites, but that honestly, can be adjusted on your TV. And as I played with different HDR modes, I did get it to a point where I really liked it. Now I shouldn't have to adjust that because I have my TV calibrated the way I like it and the Blu-ray looked good. So I shouldn't really have to do that, but you can get it there, right? And the resolution upgrade is good and the rest of the HDR is really nice. And so I would say it's worth an upgrade visually, but not for $30. This is not one that I would spend full price on. Whereas A New Hope, you could probably convince me to go full price on it. I think that this is a movie you need to wait and upgrade for maybe like 10 bucks, $15 tops, because it really just isn't as good as A New Hope. The leap from Blu-ray to 4K isn't as good. It has high points, it has really low points, and that overall kind of makes it like a two and a half, three out of five on the picture, whereas A New Hope was more like a four, four and a half. So I was a little disappointed with this one, but there are some shining moments which will certainly make fans happy, but overall, I think it could have been better. One thing to note, this was done by Disney in Lucasfilm because they own the rights to Empire Strikes Back, whereas A New Hope was supervised by Fox. And so it is a different uh, team, a different restoration team, a different color grading team, different people working on this release than on A New Hope. And so I'll see how Return of the Jedi looks, but if this is a trend, I'm a little bit worried that A New Hope is gonna be the bright shining star and the rest of the movies are not gonna be so great, at least in the original trilogy. Now for audio, we do get a Dolby Atmos track and I was pretty impressed with that. A few standouts included the asteroid field scene. That obviously was awesome to listen to in Atmos with the Millennium Falcon and the Star Destroyers going through with the TIE Fighters through the asteroid field. Another highlight was the lightsaber battle at the end. And there are some highlights on Hoth in the beginning as well. So there's plenty in this movie to really highlight the Atmos track. It is a definite upgrade over the previous 6.1 DTS HD. It's a really nice track. There's tons of action in this one compared to A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, even compared to Return of the Jedi, probably has the most action sequences. And I was most excited about the Atmos track on this and it didn't disappoint. 
Now, one thing to note, you're not getting the Atmos track on the Blu-ray of this. It's just on the 4K, which is something Disney does that's pretty typical. Now, the only other thing, too, was that the volume adjustment that I needed to make on A New Hope with this Atmos track, I had the same issues here with Empire Strikes Back. The audio sounds much better because the movie was shot better and they had better equipment like I talked about with the visuals. There's a higher budget, higher production value on this one. And so it definitely sounded better. I didn't have weird sound, but it was low at times, especially the dialogue. And so, you know, I don't usually have to adjust my center channel for other movies on Atmos, but on these ones, I've had to play with that a little bit to get dialogue up to where I want it to be. Music and sound effects are pretty good, but the front and center channels were having a tough time and I just needed to crank the volume on those. So it's disappointing. You shouldn't need to do that. Again, sort of the same way you have to adjust your HDR a little bit to get a better picture. It's just like, it was it was close to being really good and if disney had put in a little more effort this could have been a five out of five release and instead it's really more like a three it's a pretty average 4k disc in my opinion now packaging is one thing that i did like on a new hope and i still like on empire strikes back this one is uh, has sort of like a blue, light blue color to it. I love the artwork on these. The slip covers are really nice. They're actually like embossed and debossed. They have a little texture to them. And then the discs on the inside, you've got your Blu-ray disc on the right. And then again, we've got stacked discs. You've got your 4K, which is stacked on top of the special features disc. I hate that. Um, again, it's like cutting corners, which is seems to be Disney's go-to to cut corners and get so close to doing a good job and just missing it at the last minute. I prefer a tray here or something to hold that third disc so there's no scratching and stacking, but it is what it is. Now on this Blu-ray, it does have some new special features, none on the 4K disc, but that special features Blu-ray has three or four new sequences. Now it's odd because there's a documentary on the making of the film. There's um, a whole documentary on how they used matte paintings as backdrops, which is actually really interesting. And then there's interviews and commentary and other things which were on the previous Blu-ray. But the odd thing is there's one called Conversations, The Lost Interviews, which I was excited about, but it's all interviews with the cast and crew of Star Wars A New Hope, which is weird. Why wouldn't that be on A New Hope's disc instead of this one? It's almost like they sort of just packaged a bunch of features together for the big box set and then had to decide where to split them across the individual releases because that should really be on A New Hope and not Empire Strikes Back. Now, granted, it's mostly the same cast and crew, so it is what it is, but that was an odd special feature to see on this. And still, it, it just another another way that Disney felt like we, we didn't go 100% effort on this release. So overall, is it worth an upgrade? Um, I, I would say at the current price point, no. There are ways to get these cheaper. You can go through Disney Movie Club or do the buy two, get one at Target. But this is not my favorite of the trilogy so far. A New Hope still is the best of the group. Empire had too many issues with the HDR and too many issues with black and white just being not right. They just didn't grade them right. There's something wrong there with the black levels and the white points and the brightness. Now, the other aspects of the HDR were nice. Resolution's a definite upgrade. And again, I'm going to say this is probably the best this movie's ever looked on physical media. And for that reason, I would say add it to your collection, but it's not worth $30. It's worth 10 to $15. This is one that you get on Black Friday. I don't think you pick this up at full price unless you get a bundle deal or you do something like Disney Movie Club where they're like $14, $15 a piece. That's a great deal for it. That's a good price point. But at what Disney is asking for these movies right now, it is not worth the $30. So today in this world, is it worth an upgrade? No, but in a better world where we have better pricing, which should be coming soon, I would say to go ahead and upgrade this to your collection, but be smart with your money. This is not worth the premium price point they're putting on it. So thanks for watching everyone. I hope this was helpful. I hope this was interesting. There's a lot to talk about with these and I'm spending, honestly, I'm spending more time with these reviews than I probably am on any others just because of what it is. It's a, it's a national treasure, Star Wars. It's, you want it to be done right. It's one of the most famous movies, maybe the most famous movie series 
worldwide. And so that's why I'm spending extra time. I'm doing super in-depth comparisons. That's what I want to do to make sure I get it right. This one I would give a three, still to be seen on what we get from Return of the Jedi. We will see, I'll be doing that one soon. That's my next review. But right now, Empire's gonna be a pass for me at $30, and I recommend you save some money at this point in time. I will leave a link if you do wanna buy this on Amazon. Um, there is gonna be a link down in the description where you can pick that up. Maybe you can find a good deal used, I don't know. Um, but remember to follow me on Instagram. Check out all the other links from Amazon down in my description, which helps support my channel. And make sure you subscribe and have your notifications on so you know when these videos are released right away. I really appreciate it. We're pushing 30,000 subscribers now, so I'm trying to get there. Maybe by the end of the month, that'd be super cool. So help me get there. That'd be a big milestone. Um, but otherwise, thank you for watching. Sorry this couldn't have been a more positive review. It's good. It's just not great. And that's what I want for my Star Wars. I want great. So thanks for watching. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Um, have a great rest of your week. And I'll talk to you guys very soon.